There is a vast body of verified data. Vast body of verified data, you know. Accumulation of truths. Dealing with clairvoyance, clair audience, you know, in universities throughout the world. A waitress in Honolulu. She was Hawaiian, a native of Hawaii. She said that she always saw the death of her relatives in the newspaper before it happened. A very common experience. Relatives are always communicating with each other. And the person has already accepted death in their mind. Subjectively, most people know when they're going to die. A uh, few weeks ago, a woman of 95 years of age who lives in the community where I do. Uh, she said, I'm passing on on next Wednesday at 2 o'clock. And there are a few things I'd like to discuss before I pass on. Uh, this woman uh, knew that all her relatives were around her. It's called the cloud of witnesses. But she said, at night I see one of my boys, uh, Thaddeus. Thaddeus is the name. And uh, all she said, he's supposed to be alive in India. In, but she it, said, he's there too. He's there too. You see, people who are clairvoyant and who are in a passive state, who are about to pass on, see all their relatives the next dimension. Uh, two days later, she got a telegram saying he died in India. But he was there talking to her. That's why she was surprised. Now, uh, there's a television in the room here. So we turn on the television. There are symphonies here. Music, people, dancing, singing. They were always here. Did I have to turn the dial to prove it? If you turn on the radio, there are voices and singing here in the room. They were always here. Your loved ones are right where you are, separated by frequency only. Like you send a thousand voices over a coaxial cable. They do not collide with each other. A different frequency. If the scales of superstition fell from my eyes, you, you see your loved ones right here. Undiluted by time and space. Outside of time and space. There is no time or space in the next dimension. You communicate by thought, you travel by thought. You're everywhere. talk of cycles of 500 or 1,000 or 800 years, they're crazy. They, they don't know what they're talking about. The scientific thinker today visits no graveyard because there's nobody there. The tombs and all the Bibles of the world are empty. Why seek ye the living among the dead? They asked Socrates, you know, he had some sense. Uh, the disciples who never heard anything he taught. He said, Master, where will we bury you? He looked at them sarcastically. Uh, you foolish people can bury me any place if you can catch me. How could you catch him? If you visit a graveyard, you're identifying with lack, limitation, and finality. And you're building a cemetery in your own mind. And all the organs of your body begin to die. Why don't you give the flowers of your heart to the person right where you are? All this is extrasensory perception. You're seeing beyond your senses, you know. A medical doctor, uh, I attended his funeral for his wife, coming back in the car. He said, oh, we've been married 50 years. I'm distraught, I'm overwhelmed, I'm depressed. Nothing matters anymore. I'm dejected and I'm full of sorrow. And then you bring him back to common sense. I said, doctor, supposing, supposing you had passed on first, he's the doctor. Uh, oh, he said, she'd be distraught, overwrought, depressed. 
She couldn't live, it'd be terrible. Well, I said, you saved her all that, didn't you? <laughs> he saw the point immediately. Uh, protected grief is morbid selfishness. You're holding the other person back. There is no love there. Love frees. Love gives. Yeah. Love rejoices in the new birthday in God. Uh, so we should wake up. The uh, whole world is absolutely brainwashed. If you begin to think of death in the other person, everything begins to die in you. Death is in us, not in the other person. How crazy can we be? Apollonius of Tyana, Apollonius of Tyana, 2,000 years ago, he was accused of heresy, a heresy, you know, uh, what they believe to be lies about God, what they believe to be false truths, you know. Uh, he looked at his judges, he laughed at them, he dematerialized his body. Yes. He was 300 miles away talking to the monks instantaneously. Who was he? Was he a body? You have bodies to infinity. Uh, <clears throat> Saint Anthony of Padua was celebrating Mass in the 12th century. It was an Easter Sunday morning. This is history. He said, I promised to speak to the monks on Easter morning 300 miles away. He apologized. He put the cowl over his head. <clears throat> the cowl. Instantaneously, he was 300 miles away and gave a half hour lecture to the monks. These things were always known. Uh, <coughs> Dr. Uh, <coughs> Ryan's associate, Dr. Hart, he found that 33% of 155 medical students had experiences outside their body. That is, uh, he showed irrefutable proof that a man, for example, is hypnotized and he sent to a spe specific mission. Yes. He goes in through the window, he describes everything in the room. He says what you're reading and what you're doing. Like what? He tells what you're reading and what you're doing. What? He tells about the girl who's taking the dictation. Yet the body is over here. He demonstrated many, many such instances. For example, Dr. Hart brings out, if a mother has a proclivity or a tendency to visit her sick daughter. She's in San Francisco. She's already in New York in the hospital where her daughter is sick. The daughter sees her, ministers to her. The daughter sees her, and she ministers to the daughter. She's not a ghost. She's a human being. She's a personality. Uh, Dr. Uh, Hart brought out that you can think, speak, act, completely independent of your physical organism. Psychological laboratories for the last hundred years all over this world have demonstrated that man can think, see, hear, think, see, hear, Denken, feel, sehen, hören, fühlen, travel, können. independent of his physical organism. In other words, all the faculties of the senses can be duplicated in mind alone. Nature leaves no gaps. Nature makes no mistakes. It was intended that you use all these faculties transcendentally of your environment. That's very interesting and of course is well known in scientific circles today. woman uh, who uh, her husband passed on she wondered where the will was she couldn't find it and she prayed this way <coughs> infinite intelligence reveals to me where the will is and I follow the lead which comes uh, she did this every night she got no answer for several nights but she persisted but he who perseveres shall receive the answer uh, going into the kitchen one morning, she heard her husband's voice. Look up <coughs> the 45th chapter of Isaiah. 
and she opened it up and there was the will. A new will, documented, legalized. Now, uh, she asked for guidance, the subjective wisdom spoke to her in a voice that she would obey and listen to her. You can say it was a dramatization of her subconscious, or you can say her husband had this intense desire uh, which was communicated to her subconscious and assumed the form of a voice. What difference does it make? There's only one answer from one source.